call. Today is the December 12th Volta TST call. And we are recording this session and it will be posted later on the Volta channel. So we have a slightly different start for our agenda today. Uh, rather than diving right into status updates on the Open JIRA issues, you'll note that I believe as of yesterday at least, the adapter issues were still on hold pending hardware access. I don't believe I saw any updates since yesterday. Is that still the case? Are we still uh, sorry, trying I was, to obtain? I was on mute. Okay. <laughs> I, I I haven't um I didn't hear any update from um CalSoft on that, although I, I have um I, I'm making progress on my side to, to okay. fix some of that. It, um you know, build some of what is up there. I think they re responded to some review yeah. comments, yeah. but they need a direct direction on that. Um, uh, getting that, um, the um, Intel uh, free uh, Redfish stuff from Rack Scale, um, we, we can't take it in there like that. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm just pour, pouring through that build right now and see if there isn't a better alternative. Um, to, to doing that and um, so I might be able to get some test coverage on my side. I don't know, is anybody from um, CalSoft on? Look like it. Or, or David is not on. Okay. Okay, so I think for that, so thank you for that update, Kim. And for today, I since Sean, unless you've heard differently, I think there's still an issue for CalSoft getting hardware access, and that's still being worked. And then Kim's working some issues in the background with uh, some of the submitted code. So we'll look for email updates if there are other status updates to give on that today, unless there's uh, a specific adapter issue that needs to be addressed. So what I wanted to do for the start today was kick off some roadmap discussion related to RegID support. So this is follow up from the meeting last week that Sean, um, as product owner, had with DT, and seeing what we could do to help assist with the timeline for uh, the support for RegID, which they're planning to use in a field trial. So we tossed around a few ideas and wanted to bring uh, a proposal to the group here to see if there would be any support for what I will describe in a moment and just get the community thoughts, and then we can kind of plan and get back to DT after we have this meeting today. So the discussion that we had is it sounds like the support for RegID is um, really about ready in terms of being sub ready to be submitted as a patch. And if that could be done, and if we could adjust the 1.2 schedule by pushing the close date out, since there's no one that we are aware of waiting specifically for the 1.2 release, if we could adjust the schedule and then add in this one item, then that would line up better with the DT's schedule and their, their support. Otherwise, they'd have to do their field trial without the support and then wait for it to be formally supported in the next release. So what we were looking at for a proposal, if I can find the timeline slide, is rather than closing this sprint on December 22nd as planned, closing it the first week of January. And that's dependent, of course, on, you know, the the stability of what's coming in and making sure the scope is limited, that no other um, negative impact is going to be experienced by other groups. And, and if it was deemed that it was a low enough risk to do that and that adding a couple weeks onto the schedule could allow us to include Reg ID, then we thought that may be a viable option, but we wanted, we told DT we'd come back to the community and get the views on this call today. So any high-level comments or, or initial thoughts from the group? Oh, okay, I, I can start out. This Kim, I can start out a little bit. So um, one of the requisites on this is going to be Vol 576 um, to, 
get um, the the underlying bell to the right snapshot release that has that um, that reg um, the registration ID indication. Okay, so that is kind of all going in part, you know, with the the stuff I've been looking at with the the redfish. So this is more of a like a validation thing that that has to be in there. So the you know the instructions for 1.2 would be. Um, uh, the 1.2 release would be to pick up the um, the driver build from the bell 2.4.7.12 snapshot. Okay, Th this one this one right here, and I, I expect this one is going to um, um, you know pretty easily be resolved. There is no data model changes or anything like that, so it seems to be a um, the the stability side from um, Broadcom's point of view would be, you know, would be um, pretty solid. So it's just a matter of the, you know, the the testing that we're doing on the the radius side just to make sure all this is is looking good. But any of this can be picked up by anybody that has been building um, building this um, dri driver. It is is all. Um, Available up in that uh, that Broadcom CSP ticket, so so they Broadcom has released that snapshot in the same way they did the previous one. Okay, and, and, and that snapshot uh, the 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 act, uh, act on or edge core has packed it in and then put it back into the CSP. Is that correct? I mean, right, right. There, it, okay. there is a there is an Acton patch that that goes with it in, in the same form. So, um, what when this ticket closes, um, which which may be um, pretty soon, you know, in the next next few days, there will be like an update to the, um, you know, to the build instructions in that driver that just referenced the newer. You know, the newer snapshot, newer Acton patch, which are available the same way that the previous one was. Um, if you have not done so, can you put a CSP number on the ticket? Um, yes, I can. I'll put that in as, as a note, what that CSP number is. It's referenced in the, um, in the driver build readme.md file, but I'll, I'll put it here as, as well. Okay, and then um, maybe we could get a, a, a comment um, from Amit if Amit's on. Um, I, there's been progress on that registration ID testing. I'd like to, you know, if Amit can comment where we are on that. Uh, no, Kim, uh, I think it's still not working. So uh, okay. the registration ID reported by the uh, by Bell still seems to be null. So uh, we're working with Broadcom on that. Okay. So the bottom line is that there's um, that this foundation was supposed to be the one that was carrying the registration ID. It's uh, it's, now it's not clear. Um, I, I did see those um, a little bit of communication from Broadcom um, today on that, and um, so we'll just have to see if. You know, if this is going to be an update to the snapshot release, or is it maybe something the code is not doing right? So it's it's not determined yet completely what's you okay. know what the problem is with that. But 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 you know, Kim, just make sure because you do have a deadline on this one, right? So so if this get too long, then the one that two will get extended too much. So I think the the beginning of the January, I think that's probably, you know, pretty, uh, we would like to firm it up. Um, otherwise, it's just going to get, get dragging up. Um, I think Bjorn is going to join the call pretty soon. I just sent him the meeting invite. But anyway, so, um, but uh, on, on the extent of this, uh, the, you know, in, in addition to BAL, um, does the ONU software need to be uh, changed also? Uh, for the Broadcom ONU? Yeah. Is that? ONU adapter, what I'm saying, uh, and the software. 
Amit, can you can you comment on that? Yeah, uh, I, I have it. Yes, yeah, Sean. So uh, uh, I don't think there would be any change in the ONU adapter, uh, the ONU adapter, Bracom ONU adapter, but there would be some changes in the uh, OLT adapter. That should be it. That there will be change on the ONT adapter. OLT. 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 Only the only the OLT adapter. Right, because oh. that's what bring, brings the indication, the registration ID in, indication up through there. So that that's, you know, that would make sense where that, you know, where that is. And, and we'll, we'll just, you know, um, ha have to try to work through that because, you know, this was a last minute feature request to go into 1.1.2. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to work it have to work it as it is, but it's uh, the foundation looks like it's on the, the Broadcom site. It doesn't come up there. Um, th that indication doesn't isn't coming up properly. So it's just it just has to uh, we have to work through that and find out where exactly the problem is. And, and, and we have Sundar here. I think the, the OpenCon actually writing some software for Broadcom. So, but but it wouldn't be. Uh, registration ID is part of the OMCI, so so if the ONU OMS, I'm just guessing, if the ONU side doesn't, I mean, how does OOT receive the, ON, the, the the registration ID? You have to come from the the ONU via the OMCI, right? Yeah, it's it's like the, how the serial number is coming yeah. up as well. Yeah, it's it's on the PLM channel. It's a PLM yeah. message. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's so, right. We uh, confirm it over the PLOAM channel. Right. So let yeah, me circle. The, 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 Go ahead, the, Kim. Pro the problem is, I, I, I believe that it's it's coming. It looks to me like it's coming up through the lower levels of you know through the Maple side. The indication is coming up okay. It's just getting it up through the bow interface is is the problem. So there's not a fundamental underlying problem, you know, in uh, where there'd be any expectation that, you know, this is on the ONU side that would have the problem or, or the OMCI communication. It's just this indication through bow as bow reporting it, you know, up up through to the OLT layer is basically what the, you know, where the hang up is. Okay, so I want to go back and circle back to the schedule for a minute, you know, with a, a comment that Sean made. So I think we're what we need is a decision out of this call on the viability and the agreement, if we have agreement with the group, to go ahead and try to pull this in. So if it does not look like this can be resolved by that first week in January, I think we're sticking with the original timeline, which is December 22nd for everything closed out. Hopefully the release tagged a little bit earlier so the software side is done and the last few days are only documentation. If the group agrees that this looks reasonable and low risk in terms of timeline, right now we know there are some issues, so it's if we think that could be resolved in time to still meet the release date for the first week in January, then that's that's our other option. So I think we need to decide which path to go on. I don't think we want to go past this date. In part, uh, Sean, I think last I'd heard from you, you were looking at potentially scheduling a lockdown meeting for Volta 1.3 and 2.0 planning to occur in early January as well, the first half of January. Yeah, so I, I don't the... think we really want to let this slip beyond that first week. Right. So, so we 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 are. I think you know we keep saying tentative, yeah. but but uh, but I think we we should just schedule it. Um, it's uh, January tenth and eleventh. I think that's a Wednesday and Thursday on the second week of January. We're going to have the Volta um, technical lockdown in San Ramon, California. So so. Uh, so now I, I send out an email, so uh, and hopefully um, people can start making travel arrangements. So, so that's the date. That's why um, I think 
uh, when that should be, um, um, the, you know, released before that date. Um, otherwise, you know, people just continue working on the one dot two while we're talking. That I don't know. <laughs> well, I, what the suggestion might be is, you know, is is to maybe hold the. All right. So the only thing we're really waiting for is is that um, registration ID feature for the you know for the Edge Core. Um, so we we could still have 1.2.0 as you know as the as the target. And if for some reason, which I think it might, is probably unlikely, but on the other hand, you know there's you know holidays coming up here that you know that feature could be in a 1.2.1 that just that just follows on so the commitment probably should be to release the 1.2 on that same timeline regardless if if the um registration id fixes in there or not and then do the you know do a dot one you know to, to, to pick it up we i think we were trying to avoid based on the previous discussion we've had with the group on on considering an, a 1.2.1 1 .1, just in terms of release management uh, so I, I think it's we either decide to try to proceed so right now I think we know that the uh, some of the adapter issues are at risk for making it into 1.2 uh, because of some yeah, the the issues with the getting access to hardware for testing to occur and things like that. So we already know that part of the release is at risk. I don't know if pushing the schedule out by two weeks gives that a better chance at being resolved or not. I think that's still TBD. But if we push it out in order to try and do Reg ID, I think if Reg ID isn't resolved by then, we cut the release at the end of the first week of January regardless. But I think the decision we need from the community is is this an acceptable path forward at you know because we're bringing something in for a change to the scope fairly late right do we want to go ahead and delay this and try to pull it in and then if it doesn't make it in january uh at the end of the week we go ahead and close the release and what we'll, and reg id would then go to 1.3 so it's do we hold with the 22nd or do we open the window to try and pull in reg id and see if we can pull that off by the first week of January. Do we have a, a view from the the group on, on how they would like to proceed? Or do we have anyone who would object to delaying the release by a couple of weeks? Well, I guess okay. there's no objection. I'm then. not hearing any objections. So I think I'll take that as, you know, so Kim, with Kim and Amit, so with with the uh, um, visibility you have to the issues going on, do you think that there's a good chance this can be resolved so that it's working properly by the first week of January? Is there a reasonable chance of success is I guess what I'm looking for? Yeah, uh, this is Amit. Yeah, I think uh, two weeks should be, it's it's more than two weeks, two and a half weeks. I think that should be yeah, the yeah. Get this yeah. Okay, so I didn't hear any objections from the group, so I'm going to propose we go ahead and move forward with this plan. So we have kind of this draft roadmap. So Tim, thank you for pulling this together. Draft revised roadmap that would then move the close for 1.2 out to the end of the first the first Friday in January and that will give us a handful of days so we'll meet I believe on the second and then wrap things up over the next couple of days in January to close it out by the end of that week and if for some reason the issues cannot be resolved for reg ID then that would have to be uh, pushed off until 1.3 but it sounds like we're fairly confident that this could be resolved so that's good news and then the following week, we'd have the lockdown in San Ramon, as Sean mentioned, for release planning for 1.3 and 2.0. And related to that, let me go back over to email. Just a reminder for folks uh, from the, the TST meeting we had last week, last Thursday, 
on this, some of the near-term action items we have are to help prep us for that face-to-face -face meeting as well. And so I did receive a volunteer to work on the comparison of the Emmys that are in the current library. And so Chip, I see you on the phone. Chip had volunteered to work on this. Uh, is that still valid? I'm hoping it is. Uh, yes, that should be, so. Great, thank you very much. And then a reminder also for the service provider, Sean was gonna be kind of shepherding this through. We'd be working targeting end of the year to have uh, use cases for open OMCI developed and prioritized. And then that would be used as input for the open OMCI work as well. And I think would be critical to have that for the January discussions. And then similarly, we were looking for volunteers to put together architecture framework proposals for discussions and then targeting early January for that as well. And hopefully we'll have multiple uh, multiple people working on that. And then finally, the one we'll be transitioning to momentarily is uh, Sean did invite OpenCon to present on today's call. So we'll be handing it over in a few moments for them to present a proposal on the architecture and framework for open OMCI support. So just a reminder about those near-term action items. So we did get a volunteer to look at the comparison between the MEs in the current library and the MEs in open OMCI to, to look at the deltas there and identify those. And then we have work for service providers and then work on the architecture side as well for some proposals. And let me go back to today's agenda then. So I think that covers really what we were looking at for trying to see if we could support RegID in 1.2. We'll proceed with adjusting the schedule as we talked about, and we'll get a, the new timeline posted as well. So that's available for people to look at. And then this means that we'll still be looking to get all the documentation and everything resolved that first week as well but it has it gives us a couple more weeks to try and resolve the adapter issues and then also to pull in reg id support hi and, um, I have a yes quick question um is uh, 2.0 the same as 1.3 uh, i mean just renaming no. it or is it post uh, 1.3 they are two different releases okay let me go back here so 1.3 is targeted to have open OMCI and then uh, migrating from Docker Swarm to Kubernetes. So 1.3 is limited right now to open OMCI and Kubernetes as the main focus. And then 2.0 okay. is looking to involve many more new features and functionality. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Yes. Other questions? Okay, so before we hand it over to OpenCon, let me just circle back to the JIRA issues. Are there any issues that need discussion with the group on the call today? We talked a little bit about the adapter ones and the ones related to RegID. Anything else? I think it's in fairly good shape. Yeah. Okay. I think we can go ahead and, and hand this over to OpenCon for their presentation. And again, this is being recorded, so just reminding everyone of that. And if you could let me know who I should give presentation rights to. Hi, Julie. This is Sundar from OpenCon. How you doing? Could you ask? Uh, you. Yeah. Could you let me do the? Uh, allow me to share my screen. Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure, thank you. Okay, uh, hi everybody. Uh, we haven't been in this call for, uh, uh, for a while. Uh, this is Sundar, I'm working for OpenCon Systems. And OpenCon Systems has been in the, uh, we've been developing uh, software solutions for PON networks since 2005. Uh, we started with just to open a, a just the OMCI stack implementation, and now we've moved on to uh, almost turn, providing turnkey solutions for uh, OLT systems. Okay, that includes PON, EPON, uh, GPON, EPON, TENGI EPON, XGPON, XGS PON, and so on. Okay, uh, so we uh, we develop software which we license to uh, equipment vendors, uh, and uh, they in turn sell it to the service providers. 
Okay, so uh, our presentation today will focus on how is it that we can have our product, which is a software product, uh, which we call as an OLT manager, to interoperate with Volta. Uh, we understand the, the Volta framework, the Volta architecture, and we just wanted to present to the community here uh, our thoughts on how we should interoperate our software with Volta. Okay, so um, give me a minute while I uh, go into presentation mode. Um, I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Yes. Yes, perfect. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, basically, what is the OCS OLT manager? Okay, so we say XGPON here, meaning we support different PON technologies. Okay. So basically, it includes all the software components needed to build a carrier class uh, OLT system. Okay. So the software has been field tested, deployed, and is fairly mature. Okay, so uh, what we include in this is a, a full G988 compliant and AT&T and Verizon Open OMCI compliant OMCI stack, which means we support all the MEs that the Open OMCI specs specifications list, all the attributes, the things that go on and so forth within our, within our stack. Okay, so as far as the functionality that is supported. Uh, we have pond link management. We automatically have ON, uh, ONU discovery activation. Uh, we have periodic MIP, OMCI MIP audits, MIP synchronization. Okay. Uh, all our data path establishment model is based on profiles, meaning you know you have a set of profiles created and applied to different ONUs. So it kind of reduces the amount of provisioning that an operator has to do. Okay. We include uh, uh, performance measurement data collection. Uh, we do a 15 minute interval and uh, we do it for 24 hours. Uh, we also monitor thresholds and then raise threshold crossing alerts uh, whenever uh, the threshold is exceeded. Okay. Uh, we also process and forward alarms and events that occur locally on the OLT and as well as any alarms and events that's received from the ONU. Uh, we do uh, we do ONU firmware management, meaning uh, you can upgrade the software image on the ONU via the OMCI channel from the OLT. Okay, we support different methods of upgrade, on-demand upgrade, scheduled upgrade, and uh, 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 and uh, we can do like a forced upgrade and uh, automatic upgrade. Meaning, whenever an ONU is plugged into the pond, we check the version that it ought to be at and what the actual version. And do an upgrade. Okay, you can do remote ONU tests and diagnostics. Uh, the so the software does uh, robo ONU detection. Uh, we also do time of day synchronization, which is needed if you're going to deploy the uh, pawn system as a mobile backhaul um, in a mobile backhaul application. Okay, and uh, the OLT manager supports full Type B and Type C protection. Okay. Uh, any questions from anybody? Okay. So moving on. Another feature is we support a large number of ONUs. The software is scalable. Uh, we can work with a small pizza box type of OLT with probably phone power, four pawn ports, or we could scale it uh, depending on the number of uh, on the number of pawn ports on the system. Okay. And the OLT manager is already interop tested with the large number of ONUs uh, from different vendors. Okay, uh, we also support hitless upgrade of the OLT manager software, which is running, which will run on the board. Okay. Uh, on the northbound side, the OLT manager pro uh, provides protocol agnostic uh, interfaces for integration with management application. And on the southbound side, we provide hardware agnostic interfaces, so uh, we can work with Maple or any other SOC vendors. Yeah. That's a brief of the OLT manager software as it exists today. Okay. So we want to show this is the Volta architecture. You know, this picture should be familiar to all of you. And on the bottom, what we propose to do is have uh, have 
implement two adapters, what we call as OCS OLT and OCS ONU adapters. Uh, this is very similar to all vendor specific adapters that you have in the system currently, uh, except that it works with our OLT manager. Okay, so moving on to the next step, this is the overall architecture of the OLT manager residing in conjunction with uh, Volta. Okay, so from Volta, from purely Volta architecture point of view, nothing is going to change within Volta core. Uh, our adapters here, which we call the OLT adapter, OCS OLT adapter and OCS ONU adapter, would behave identical to all the current adapters that you have. Uh, they will talk. They will talk to the core through the Python interface that exists today, and uh, any future changes in those interfaces will be rolled into these adapters also. Okay. The adapters themselves will talk to an OLT manager instance, which is going to run on a separate Docker instance. Okay. Uh, that's going to be driven by uh, a northbound gRPC interface. And the OLT manager itself will talk to OCP-based OLTs through another gRPC interface. Okay. So the OCS OLT manager is a licensed software and uh, you know, we will probably run a binary instance of this within the Docker. Okay, uh, northbound gRPC interfaces would be open uh, for Volta adapter of of uh, for Volta. Okay. Okay. Any questions? So. Um... Um, <laughs> um, I just, I, but, 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 so, so the, all the control and management of the, the hardware still coming from the Volta, right? So, and if the yes. servers provisioning, servers provisioning with Onos, um, still, yeah. still go through the vote, you know, the, the, the the open flow go down uh, coming yes. down and, yes. and but as at, at what point it will it will touch but okay so so does the OOT adapter or the OCS OOT adapter um uh I would say communicate or interface with the Volta directly or it, it, it only interface to to your OOT manager. Well, it'll interface to both. It'll interface with the core using your existing Python interfaces, and it'll talk to the OLT manager or gRPC. Okay, so the adapt from Volta core point of view, the OCS adapter will be identical to you know your, your other adapters that you have, H core, uh, Broadcom, whatever adapters that you have today. So Sundar, um, just a quick question. So all these components that uh, will OCS is introducing, um, they're all closed. Uh, none of them are open source. Uh, they're binaries. Uh, absolutely. Only the northbound gRPC interface and maybe even the southbound gRPC interface, uh, they will be open. Of course, the OLT adapters and the ONU adapters will be open. Okay. okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Those adapters are fine. Yes. Okay. The, ad the adapters will be open. Well, what will what will not be open is the OCS OLT manager software, including the OMCI stack, because okay? that's proprietary. That's our bread and butter. Okay, so it's licensed. Okay, good. Uh, just a quick question: If uh, if uh, I see you have the op open OMCI within mm -hmm. the OCS OLT manager, mm -hmm. so if another adapter wants to use that open OMCI, would they be able to do that? Or it's 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 really proprietary, it's all within uh, the OLT manager? No, I, yeah, as long as, yeah, the only way to use it is if you you need to come through our ad adapter. Uh, you need to use the OCS OLT and OCS ONU adapter. Okay, which will be open. Right. right, or if you want, you can build your own adapter and hook it up to our northbound GRPC interface. Which is open. Okay, that will be an open. That will be open. Uh, but that would mean a rewrite of like of the existing uh, 
uh, adapters that we have, for example, for edge core OLT and the Broadcom OEM. I mean, th these would be completely uh, different adapters. Yeah, uh, yeah pretty much. It, it, uh, yeah. it looks like they're moving all the adapters from the adapter layer to be within the OLT manager. No, actually, the adapter, what we are trying to do is we are trying to take the core OLT management functions, right, which is, which mm -hmm. is, uh, and move it into the OLT manager because the OLT manager today already supports all of these functions. Okay, so so basically the adapter serves as an interface for anybody to use the OLT manager software. No, no, in okay. sense, so, suppose I have a Broadcom uh, ONU adapter today. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to use the OLT manager, so I need to communicate with the northbound GRBS interface of the OLT manager, right? That's right, that's so right. How much, uh, how much code will there really be within the Broadcom uh, when you are OLT adapter? Well, the adapter is transparent, right? Well, Sundar, this is um, Kim Kemp on, on the uh, edge core adapter. So what, what you're proposing here, this looks like an alternative to what we've already implemented for for edge core. This is a, um, a, a driver component and it's, it's, you know, it's split a little bit differently. There's a Docker site and there's an NOLT site. So, so this is much more than just an OMCI stack. This is an entire OLT management. Yes, yes. that's right. I think that you're proposing. So what that means is in the, you know, if, um, if, if you look at those adapters, there's a Broadcom, maple adapter which has a, a python based southbound mm -hmm. which this thing could be hooked to but if, if you look at the the asf the olt 16 adapter this broadcom bal based okay mm -hmm. what this means is this would replace the bal with this component that has the omci um implemented you know it implemented in it as as well so um so I think this proposal here is an alternative um, way to um, implement the the OLT control function, right? Yes, rather, exactly. Rather than just OMCI. Okay. Yeah. Right. The advantage with this is, uh, you know, the OLT manager is field deployed, tested, and it's ready today. And it includes a lot of functions that you need to Mid perform form. in each adapter like the MIB synchronization, MIB audit, the ONU discovery activation, all those functions are already built in. You don't have to implement in each adapter. Uh, yeah, that's right, but it's it's closed. It's, it's closed source. Right, right. And, you know, Sean Ying, that, that's, you know, kind of the observation that's here. What 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 this is proposing is basically, a, you know, an, an alternative that brings all adapters to a common point and then implements them with OCS OLT. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a that's a that's a consideration there. So um, I'm not sure what to make also of that right at, at this point. Right. No, I, it I, also requires um, the southbound is Google RPC to OLT, so it requires a Google RPC interface to OLTs. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, so, okay. oh, we could build we could build other uh, interfaces to the OLT. You know, we could do a netconf based, open flow based. We could do REST based. Okay, so right now what we are proposing is the gRPC. Okay, so we could uh, there'll be a thin gRPC server uh, and a client which is which will reside on the OLT. Uh, it could be a REST server. Uh, it could be a netconf agent. Uh, it could be an open flow. Uh, the the, the pr primary thing you know I think I was looking at here was to get an alternative for an open OMCI that would go into the you know the edge core. OLT in a disaggregated form. I mean, the whole idea is to 
disaggregate this stuff, not push software down into the OLT, but to keep it up above the, mm -hmm. you know, as, as much okay. up in the, um, yes. you know, yes. up in the SDN as, 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 as possible, possible here. Yes. Yes. So, and, yes, that's and what, I, uh, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what we are proposing with the GRPC interface. We don't want, you know, even though today we can, we are capable of supporting NetConf and all that, we don't want to do that. We want to, we want uh, NetConf and OpenFlow all to control Volta and then have the flow that exists today for uh, control and management purposes with no modifications in Volta. Right, because uh, you know, this arc, because OCS OLT is fully capable of mm -hmm. implementing everything that Volta is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Right. Okay. So it's it's kind of taken a um, that th there's definitely a hardware abstraction here that you have an o OCS OLT, and this is taking this abstraction and probably have a, a, a thin layer um in in the volta adapter that goes directly to this olt manager and then it becomes the heart of volta so to speak that's controlling you know everything all the you know the olt south map yes yeah. okay so that that's i guess that's the point for the community is that this this um proposal here is basically uh you know is uh Right now, a little bit, you know, I have to say it, it it's sort of a different kind of a vendor lock here where um, it, it certainly provides, you know, a, a full, you know, a full robust OLT solution. But um, that's the thing that has to be weighed with with the Volta community if, if this, this um, proposal comes in for the, you know, for the white box OLTs, then you know, then it's, um, we have a Broadcom proprietary component that goes in and then a, and then a o OCS um, component that goes in as well. And we just have to decide, if, you know, if that's the, you know, if that's the, the direction to go that we want to, you know, based on the <laughs> components or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> for some, for some, I, I just thought, uh, it, 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 not 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 making any um yeah. judgment here i'm looking for open omci but i'm getting a much bigger thing than what i what i'm looking for right so um yeah that's that's kind of the point i'm not i i, I like this alternative you know this you know what, what you know what we're seeing this is a, a very good solution but we have to put it together with all of the you know what are the asks what you know what is the you know the spirit of what we're asking for in here and it was an o omci stack is uh, you know i i thought that we were you know that is the immediate problem but if we're going to solve more of a different problem which is you know bringing in you know a, a full functional virtualized olt um that you know that can run alongside a volta then then that's kind of a yeah, a different thing that I see here. So just yeah. kind of being devil's advocate for the, you know, the whole um, bolt and open solution here. Yeah, the, the way so, I see so, it. So that, yeah, yeah, go ahead, look, Ken, go ahead. Uh, well, the way I see it, when I look at the OLT manager, the way it's, uh, at least on the, on the big picture there, mm -hmm. if we integrate that with Volta, I won't, cre I won't create an a OCS OLT adapter or OCS or a new adapter. Because in any case, we're moving all the adapters towards dockerizing them. Mm -hmm. So I will have the call talking directly to the OLT manager via the northbound GRPC interface. Oh. Because since if it's going to do all those adapter kind of work, then mm -hmm. might as well do it over there and have the call talk directly to the OLT manager. Uh, if we're going with, 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 that, uh, with that approach. Yes, that would be an approach but we wanted to keep uh olt manager integration to coexist with the other adapters, other adapters and not introduce a new architectural deviation from what you have well it would be like uh, the way i am looking at it if i'm looking at the functionality that is in the olt manager mm -hmm. within the volta architecture many of those functionalities will be within the i adapter uh, uh, class that we have. That's where most of those functionality would be built. 
and most of the adapters would be using inheriting those functionalities but if we're going to use the OLT manager as is uh, in a separate Docker container, then I don't see the point of having a separate adapters for from them instead of and just have the core talk directly to it. Uh, yeah, we are we are very much open. You, yeah, yeah. you do that work at the, the OSS adapter is just a thin layer. It's really try to maintain the the minimum impact to the Volta core. Because we don't want to touch the core uh, and change anything uh, specifically for this. We're trying to interwork as much as possible with the current Volta architecture. But if the community feels that uh, rather than using an adapter for this, the core can directly talk, that's an option that's we can pursue too. Yes. <clears throat> that's why I'm offering it out there. Yeah. But, but however, you know, we don't want to this thing is licensed, right? So, so if we, if based on Ken's, you know, you, that I, I don't know how it will work to have a you know open source core with a license, you know, rely on heavily on the license component. Okay, I know it's an open source project, so it's like uh, just. <laughs> 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 Um, so. Yeah, so, so Sundar, uh, is to, uh, in the present uh, model right now, um, one could uh, theoretically download Volta, uh, buy a H-Core box from, uh, from uh, and, and buy, buy H-Core box, mm -hmm. and, and actually have an OLT up and running. There's a, there's a bit of a gotcha with, with, uh, with <laughs> with signing an NDA with Broadcom for uh, uh, the BAL software, but mm -hmm. I think uh, we may move away from that uh, hopefully uh, in the future and uh, come up with a model similar to OFDPA where uh, they they open up the binary. <clears throat> so you really uh, you have a completely open uh, ecosystem where you get the white box, you download the software. And you are up and uh, up and running. So, yeah. um, in in terms of licensing, what I mean, if somebody had if wanted to 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 do something similar, uh, would they have to buy a license uh, for a binary or for for the source code? Uh, how how do you uh, plan on? That? Well, you could do both. You could either get a binary license uh, or a source source based license. Uh, so uh, we don't we offer both options to our customers. Do you have a free, a free uh, binary, uh, like a limit, like a non-enterprise version of this, um, a community version of this, or or, or it's just a one single? Um... No, we have We don't today. As of today, we don't have any uh, any version, even a binary version that is freely available. Uh, okay, but uh, we could uh, we could consider making. One available. The commercial terms of this business is changing so rapidly, yeah. and we are yet to catch up with what is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in future, who knows? We may consider offering some open source with some minimal functions. Yes. Okay, and and in terms of the southbound uh, support, uh, what do you support? I mean, uh, do you support? Uh, would you be adding support for the for? Uh, the kind of hardware that Volta is, is works with or is intending to work with, like Edge Core, uh, OLT, and Broadcom OU? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Any OCP compliant ORT? We are currently doing that work as we speak. But then the community would be dependent upon upon OCS to provide uh, OC, uh, to 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 provide that support. Um, you know, if, if let's say, like for example, we we talked about this registration ID uh, thing. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, so if, if if you want to <clears throat> move to the next BAL version or something like that, the community would have to go to OCS to get this uh, next version of the binary from from them. Well, no, actually, if it's because license uh, uh, customer. No, I'm talking about a binary license, for example. <clears throat> yeah, if it's a bi if a customer like uh, gets a binary license from us, we will provide the upgrade. Yeah. Okay. So. Got it. I, I think I think I understand the model. So, uh, do you provide support for layer two uh, OLTs? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Even yeah. with the uh, a GRPC interface there? Uh, okay, so you're talking about the control and the management plane being mm -hmm. on layer two? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, now, uh, right now, the control and management plane has to be layer three because we are supporting GRPC interface only. If you're talking about an in-band channel, I don't think we're looking at an in-band channel yet. Oh, okay. Okay, but that's uh, that depends on how the SOC, the chip vendor, does it. You know, there are some chip vendors we know that plan to do in-band management. Uh, we don't have an adapter yet for that, but for us, it's very easy to build layer two support for those customers. Uh, uh, basically, what will happen is all our control and management messages will go with the with let's say some dedicated VLAN uh, down to the SOC. Okay, so our architecture, the OLT manager here is shown as one monolithic block, whereas in reality it is split into three blocks within this. Okay, so we have what we call as a northbound interface, which is going to interface with the northbound GRPC interface. We have a core in the middle where the OMCI Every, all the functions is. And on the southbound side, within the OLT manager, there's another interface which interfaces with the southbound GRPC interface. So our OLT manager itself is sort of disaggregated. So it's easy for us to build adapters for different models. Okay. So right now we are focused on layer three, but for us to build a layer two inbound communication channel is no big deal. Ah, okay, thanks. And Sundar, you still have four pages on your slides. Of two, two, is there okay. any page that you want to go on? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, sure, I could, I could send you. You have the presentation with you already. You know, if you want, you can post it uh, to the community. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we can solicit their opinion. Like uh, uh, all this is, uh, you know, uh, open. So you could, you could post it. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, so me, okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So let me quickly flip through the sites. Basically, you know, um, on the northbound side, we have, uh, like I said, uh, GRPC interfaces. We have protobufs defined to invoke operations on the OLT manager. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, we can use the Volta uh, OpenFlow that proto to create flows and uh, adapters. The OCS OLT adapters implement gRPC uh, in Python, and OLT manager implementation is proprietary. Okay. okay. On the southbound side, again, we have an open interface based on gRPC for communication between the OLT manager and the OLT hardware. Okay. And uh, this requires a load module or an executable to reside on the physical OLT box to support gRPC requests and also for sending events okay so those are handled through the southbound interfaces okay uh, this is just a brief description of the ocs adapters for volta so we're going to have two adapters the olt and the onu adapters uh, so basically they'll support all the interface definition for the southbound uh, adapters you know health check uh, flow updates and all the functions that uh, all the interfaces that uh, the, adapt the other adapters, other vendor adapters exposed to Volta uh, will be implemented by the OCS adapters also. Okay. So the OCS adapters will be simple and for uh, and it just serves as a dispatch function uh, to the OLT manager via gRPC. The bulk of the processing is will be handled within the OLT manager context. Okay. Okay, and uh, the gRPC interface uh, supported by the old multi manager shall be made available as an open source. Okay. So that's uh, that's another thing we wanted to emphasize. <clears throat> okay, uh, here is some sample use cases that we could do uh, with the OLT manager uh, in an integrated environment with Volta. Okay, so you could do any kind of pawn link configuration for XGS pawn. You could configure transceiver type. You could configure the 
the XGS pod protocol uh, level details. Uh, you could configure uh, periodic serial number acquisition, configure periodic key exchanges uh, between the OLT and the ONU. From purely pond link management, we support type B protection <clears throat> okay. uh, with full data replication. Okay, so, uh, and also on the pond link, we do periodic time of day transfer to the ONU. Okay, so uh, if your OLT has a, a, a real time clock uh, connected to the OLT, we could uh, transmit and bring the ONUs in sync up to the millisecond level. Okay. And from ONU management point of view, we support multiple ways of ONU authentication uh, based on serial number, serial number or password, or we can do no authentication. Okay. And uh, we do automatic ONU activation, on demand deactivation, and reboot of the ONU. Uh, automatically, we do all periodic OMCI MIP and alarm synchronization. Okay. Uh, the ONU MIP is maintained within the OLT manager. Uh, a copy of the ONU MIP is maintained within the OLT manager so that any read access need not go to the ONU. It's done locally from the OLT itself. Okay. So we support uh, triple play services uh, complying to G98 standards. And we support various different traffic models to support residential SFU, MDU, and enterprise subscribers. Okay, we support one is to one, one is to M, one is to MP, N is to one, all type of VLAN mapping. Okay. And the code base already includes supports for different ONU vendors. And if you have a new ONU vendor, a new ONU type, it's seamless to add support and customize it uh, in the OLT manager. Okay. Uh, I'm just quickly flipping through it. Uh, we can also do rogue ONU detection and disablement. Uh, we can do, uh, we support ONU's type C protection. And this combined with type B will provide full path protection on the path. Okay. Uh, from an upgrade, ONU software upgrade point of view, we can do scheduled automatic and on demand uh, software updates. Uh, you can upgrade one ONU or you can multiple, uh, or you could upgrade all the ONUs in the network in parallel. And uh, uh, we make sure that the image that is up updated on the o ONU is the right one. And in case there is any issue, we can roll back the ONU image in case there's any failure. Okay, these are some of the these are some of the broad uh, uh, use cases. There's a lot of other uh, features and functions that we could support. Yeah, uh, Sundar, I think it, it, it's you know it. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I think it's um, uh, it's in some way uh, as it, it's it's a bigger scope than what we expected, right? So <laughs> we started from open OMCI, uh, mm -hmm. by, uh, but and, but it come with a lot of the the OOT ONU management functionality. Which but those is, functionalities are needed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you, you need it in a real. No, no, I, th I, th I think that's part of the, you know, the, the, the continued work we are expecting the, the, the community to keep continue to add those features in. So, so, so the, the OOT management definitely is a missing um, part, at least, uh, at least not fully uh, scope out here uh, within the community today. Um, the other thing is, uh, you, I don't know what is. Uh, I, I I do like to look at this a little bit more and see how, um, you know, AT and T also presenting the open, you know, open source access manager. How mm -hmm. interaction between the open source in, uh, access manager to this OOT management, mm -hmm. um, and one other thing is uh, the. I don't know whether you know other hardware vendors in the community whether they understand how to interact with your uh, OOT manager. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of the hardware OOT vendor probably already have some of the onboard OOT manager within their own hardware. So mm -hmm. how exactly um, it, it, it's uh, it's uh, it, we can take you know the community can take benefit of the feature mm -hmm. already. You know, come. I, I'm. I'm assuming. You know, the, the 
uh, you're pretty confident that the software availability is 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 there uh, pretty soon. So yeah. so so I I. Yeah, I like I like the proposal and really bridge a lot of gap uh, mm -hmm. between you know the 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 requirement initially we put it at, at, and then um, uh, something people need, well, you know the community need to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are running out of time. Anybody has yeah, a, anybody has a last minute question? Want to ask uh, OpenCon uh, Sunda? Maybe just a quick question in 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 your Docker uh, um, diagram there. You don't mm -hmm. show any like uh, storage. Uh, where do you store the data? Well, uh, we can uh, we we support two modes. Uh, basically, our customers uh, they can store their configuration data on their own, or we could store it persistently on the file system in a uh, in a MySQL database. Ah, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. And we are over time, so I think I'm going to have to cut the discussion short. Sorry about that. Uh, so to recap our earlier discussion, I'll be adjusting the schedule for uh, 1.2, and then we'll plan to close at the first week in January rather than December 22nd. I am planning to still host a call next Tuesday if anyone is available. I I'm not sure if we have folks. Yes, Sean, did you have a comment? Yeah, the 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 nineteenth we have talked to Bjorn from DT. I think who's on the call right now, yes. uh, potentially to introduce the DT uh, use cases yes. on the fiber to the home. The uh, most uh, and then also some of the fiber to the building also. So so that will be next Tuesday's uh, uh, topic. Yes, thank you, Sean. I had that in my notes and then I forgot to say anything, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be next Tuesday. And at this moment, since we're moving the end date for uh, for the sprint and for 1.2, then I believe that's going to be the last meeting I will be hosting for this year will be next Tuesday and then we'll reconvene in January. And then Tuesday, I believe, would be our usual scrum meeting working on the status for the release that we're planning to finalize that week. And then my proposal would be for Thursday, that first Thursday in January, to perhaps uh, have some presentations from others on open OMCI framework proposals, if we have volunteers for that. So we can discuss that over Volta Discuss since we're out of time. But Sean, did you have any any comments on that right. direction? Um, I uh, thanks on you know Sundar and 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 OpenCon for this presentation. Um, Thank you so much, it, it, mm -hmm. it, You know it, it is a very informative. You know all the feature you know AT and T are looking for. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, 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 but it, but the licensing that part we we need to work it out and also the framework that that's also the big question. Mm -hmm. um, so I do hope we're going to have uh, maybe some community discussion regarding to this proposal. I don't know exactly how we can do that. Um, so, 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 uh, so maybe, maybe more additional Q&A uh, after the, our internal discussion. Um, but, uh, but I will. I'm. I'm going to solicit the the, the suggestion regarding to how we can, you know, move forward because it is a very good presentation. Uh, I would like to see whether we can come, you know, get something out of this. Um, okay. So, and we need to wrap this up. They have this go-to meeting booked. We've got to drop so they can start their meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Good luck. Mm -hmm.